I know you're going to enjoy our very simple and yet tasty and delicious sweet rolls bread recipe that we are working on without an oven on top of your stove or cooker and thankfully I am working on it yes with a totally different method than I have always been doing on this channel and I know you're going to enjoy this particular recipe you're going to enjoy how it looks and I'm showing you how to do this in today's video I need to mention that I got inspired to bake this way from a Rosie's kitchen she was baking bread I will link her video in the description a very popular video on YouTube but I got inspired to do that I have made this method very simple for you so that even if you don't have any of the equipment you need to make your micro oven so that you come up with very tasty uh, rolls I am going to show you how to do that in today's video with tools that are readily available right where you are as you will see Welcome to Recipes and Hospitality with Clara. This is a channel where we share recipes that are simple, easy to do at home with ingredients toned down just like this one to enhance your hospitality for the glory of God. And if you're new here and this is the kind of content you like, kindly consider subscribing, hit the notification bell, you'll be notified every time I upload new content. I upload this kind of content that is very simple to make with ingredients that are most likely available right where you are. So before we get into the video, as is always our our custom on this channel we will pray and trust the Lord to guide us through this process and to help us so that our hospitality will be a blessing to many father we pray that you be with me and my viewer grant that you will be glorified as we work on this recipe and everything else we do in the kitchen we pray that you will be glorified as we practice our hospitality for your glory in Jesus name we pray amen We want to begin by making sure that our yeast is good so I will take about a quarter cup of the milk this is warm milk and pour it in a suitable bowl I'm going to add in some sugar half a teaspoon of sugar I've just scooped it from the sugar I will later use for the recipe and then I'm going to add in the one teaspoon of yeast I will stir that and then set it aside and allow it to proof for about five to ten minutes so that we just make sure that our yeast is good so we will set that aside and then I will begin to gather the rest of the dry ingredients in a separate bowl I will add three cups of all-purpose flour I will add the rest of our sugar I had set it aside the four tablespoons and so I had just scooped half a teaspoon of this so the rest of it I will add here and then add our half teaspoon of salt into these dry ingredients give them a mix and then set aside getting to about 10 minutes later our yeast is good it has actually proved and how you get to know this it usually has formed uh, bubbles it's actually very foamy and therefore that tells you it's good so we will go ahead and work with it I will add in half a cup of the milk the warm milk one egg and our melted mudge or butter usually I will heap my tablespoon with the butter not flatten it out just heap it and so have the two tablespoons melt them in a bath of hot water or you can put in the microwave for about 20 to 30 seconds and then the remaining as it melts when you swirl it around in the little container that you used it's going to melt fully just make sure it's not hot if it's too hot it's going to burn your yeast so just make sure it has cooled until it is warm and then add it to the mixture the yeast mixture so once we've given our wet ingredients a good mix with our wooden spoon we will add the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients in three batches I already did the first two batches so this last batch I can tell the dough is already heavy I was using my wooden spoon as you saw to mix and so by the third batch the dough is slightly heavy so I'm going to use my hands to mix everything together adding in a little milk until we get it to a very soft and sticky dough I worked with about 
are slightly less than a full cup of milk but because flowers will hydrate at different levels I know you can use a full cup or slightly less like I have done but the point is you want to get this dough to a smooth sticky dough as you can see so I'm going to use my bread knife to bring the dough together like I'm doing and then we will cover it and give it 10 minutes to rest. You can skip this step and go straight to kneading the dough but I just love it to rest for 10 minutes because I find it works even much better when it has rested for a short time. So 10 minutes later we will get our dough and transfer it to our floured surface then we are going to start kneading this dough and our aim is to knead it for at least 8 minutes. I like to go up to 8 minutes because, because I find 8 minutes a good compromise but actually you should knead this for about 10 to 15 minutes. I know I'm talking to busy moms and uh, women and so I know longer than that can be quite long but I have found personally 5 to 8 minutes very good for me. The dough really stretches very nicely when you knead. That's why you can knead even longer. You will get even more fluffy bread. But personally, I find eight minutes really good. You will actually notice the dough will have softened a lot, will have smoothened out a lot, will have stretched really well. And now we are good to go to the next step. So we will transfer this dough back into our bowl and now cover it and place it in a warm place in our kitchen and allow it to proof for about 45 minutes to an hour or if you have a sunny day you can take it outside and allow it to proof of course just taking care we happened to have had a cut around here some time back in the neighborhood that once attacked my door so you have to make sure that it's in a safe protected place for it to proof but if this is a cold day like it is this season in our country at least the part of uh, the country where I am it's very cold you can work with a microclimate like I'm doing get a smaller saucepan fill it with water to about quarter way bring it to a boil and then I'm going to use a heavy towel and double it fold it double like I have done because our interest is not the hot water but the warmth of the water this is what we need to help our dough to proof as you know yeast just needs a warm environment if you don't have a heavy towel like I do yours is light don't heat it until boiling just let it be hot enough so that you cover and place your dough like I have done for those 45 minutes or an hour and then it will proof because it only needs the heat so this is 45 minutes later you can see my dough has proofed really well it has doubled so I will set it aside and go ahead and grease my pan I'm using a slightly heavy pan that's about 10 to 11 inches in diameter this will be very good for our sweet rolls so once I have greased it and dusted it we will go on to our next step Remember you can also grease with cooking oil when it is bread, not cake when it is bread. So I'm just used to using marge or butter but if you prefer cooking oil you can also grease it with cooking oil. So now we will beat down our dough like I'm doing and just give it a slight knead now that you had kneaded it before just to ensure it is even and we've got rid of the air and now we will go ahead and uh, lump it up into a nice round shape and then I'm going to cut it with a scraper into eight equal pieces. If you don't have this you can work with a knife and just cut it up into eight pieces so I've begun by cutting it into quarters and then I will cut it further into eight and then we will have our pieces ready. I'm trying to ensure that they are as equal as possible but usually the sizes don't matter <laughs> for me as long as everything lands in the pan so I will just ensure that each piece is well kneaded in my hand like I'm doing so that it's even and nice and round and then we will transfer it into our pan making sure to arrange in a way that it has some space to be able to proof or to expand. So once we've done this we will do this to the rest of them and arrange them in our pan and then we will go on to the next step. I'm now going to cover them again 
and allow them to prove for about 15 to 20 minutes. Again, if you don't have a warm environment, you can also still work with your microclimate. My water now is not very hot, so I'm not going to fold my heavy towel double. I will just use it as it is. Place the rolls on top so that they can get to proof for about 15 to 20 minutes. Meanwhile, now we will work on our little <laughs> oven situation, if I would call it that. I've gotten a pan that is wider than our pan that we are using and I'm going to add in about two cups of salt. You need it bigger so that your pan can fit into this pan. So I'm spreading out the salt. Then I just got some nice smooth stones from outside now that we have had a construction site around us but just look for nice smooth stones like I have done. Gave them a good wash. You can see there are no more, no more building stones, no more hard stones. <laughs> That's all you need to bake. So I will arrange them so that they will keep our pan higher than the pan where we have put the salt because you just need the warmth that is not too direct. So once I've arranged the stones in there, I will cover them and preheat this oven situation we've made, our micro <laughs> oven for 10 minutes. I will begin by five minutes on full flame, then the last five minutes on the low flame as it has been designed by your manufacturer. I'm working with one of the wide burners, not the tiny ones. So now this is 15 minutes later. I'm getting to brush the rolls with some egg wash, basically a mixture of egg and milk so that they can have that nice shine once they are ready. So 10 minutes later, so just do your timing, especially like when you have allowed your scones to proof again, just wait until 10 minutes to, so that you preheat these five minutes with a full flame and then the remaining five minutes with a low flame. So it, it has preheated. So I have carefully placed these rolls into the pan over the stones as you can see so it's not in direct contact with the pan itself the salt is basically to protect our pan so once i have them in there set up very well i will cover and now allow this to bake for about 50 minutes to one hour depending on your flame if you worked with a fairly high flame your bread may cook for about 45 minutes but it will be too dark i just wanted it to be nice and brown once it was ready and this is about an hour later you can see that delightful color or what do i say that delightful golden touch on our sweet rolls they are actually very ready so again carefully because this is very hot we will switch off our flame and then get our sweet rolls out of this oven situation <laughs> or micro oven and now we are good to go you can see how delightful they look very nice they are well done i happen to have a good friend visit and she tasted this oh she loved them i know you too will love this recipe when you try it out so i'm basically going to apply some merge you can also work with butter on the surface of the scones while they're still hot so that as they cool they get to be just soft and supple so we will now allow our rolls to cool significantly for about an hour i allowed mine to cool for more than an hour and then we will come back and have a look at them just to see how they look and how they feel just look at them looking very nice and i know you're going to love them as well so they've cooled now we can handle the pan and we can handle the rolls as well so i'm going to get them out of this pan and transfer them to a suitable plate so that we can get to see you can see how soft and supple they are Wow, just look at that. 
this is what I meant. If you, your fire is a little too high, they can come out a little dark, but they will still be nice and cooked. That's why I prefer just to work with my very low flame as has been designed by the manufacturer for most of our gas stoves. So now we will get to see how they feel. So just see how airy and fluffy this looks. Look at that. Wow. No need for an oven in case you don't have an oven. You can bake this and enjoy your sweet rolls or scones like we call them in our country. <laughs> so we get to cutting to them very nice and soft and like I said very tasty. So try this recipe and enjoy. Enhance your hospitality for the glory of God. This should be your next recipe. This is a bread recipe that is very simple. You can bake the same way and I trust you're going to enjoy it a lot. But in case you don't yet have the equipment to do it the way I have done it today, you can still bake directly like I have done in this video and really enjoy your rolls as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Look out for our next video again, very simple. A video that I trust you will enjoy and until that next video, see you then or in this one right here.